All right, so in the lab, you found the coefficient of friction between the felt strip and plastic, cork, and another piece of felt. And they should have all been, um, you know, there's going to be some variability in what those coefficients are because of your lab techniques and because some of the surfaces are not exactly the same as other surfaces. But the end of that lab, these were static coefficients, the end of that lab, you were asked to determine what angle would be the last possible angle that you could ramp the board before the box started to slide. And so in order to do that, we need to look at a problem of equilibrium and a maximum, maximum value for the coefficient of friction, uh, sorry, for the static coefficient force, and then what angle is that maximum value at? Okay, so let's look at how that problem would have looked. So here is our ramp. And we're going to say it's angled at some angle theta. And that is the maximum angle before the box would start to slide. So here we have our box on the ramp. And theta is that maximum angle. If I move it a little bit taller, that theta, that box is going to start sliding down the ramp. Anything less and the box won't slide. That's the last possible angle. So how do we analyze a problem like this? Well, let's say we are dealing with the plastic case where your coefficient was probably around 0 0.3. So we're going to say the coefficient of static friction was equal to 0 0.3. So this was about average for the class. That's what I was told. So let's say it's 0.3 and just calculate the, make the determination of that angle based on that value of 0.3. So this is the coefficient of friction between the felt and the plastic. Could be between any two materials. Is 0.3. What are the forces acting on that block? All right. Well, if I draw a free body diagram of that block, we know we have the force of gravity, which equals mg. We have the norm that's between the earth and the block, or the cup, what you were using. We have the normal force, and that's between the ramp and the cup. And then we have the frictional force. The block wants to slide down the ramp, and so the frictional force must be up and to the right. And since it's not moving, that's a static frictional force. So these are the three forces acting on the ramp. All right, well, let's take a look at these forces, analyze them with Newton's second law, and look at the uh, relationship between that angle and the variables that we know. So let's determine what that angle needs to be given a coefficient of 0 0.3. Now, typically my strategy would be to use earth horizontal. This is a case of equilibrium, and in equilibrium, both the horizontal and vertical components are zero. But I also want to make my calculation, my determination of that angle relative to my frictional force, because that's some information that I know. So I'm actually going to look at this problem by making the coordinate system along the ramp. All right? So with the coordinate system along the ramp, this angle here is my angle theta. All right? So as I go from horizontal to tilt, as so I go from horizontal to tilt, I go from where the force of gravity would be vertical to a tilted situation. All right, so that's my angle theta. So let's number these three forces. and look at the horizontal and vertical prime components. So force number one, that's my force of gravity. In the horizontal direction, it's opposite the angle. So I have, and it's pointing down and to the right, that's going to be my negative direction. So I have minus mg times the sine of whatever that angle is. In the vertical direction, my, I'm adjacent to that angle, so my force of gravity, and it's also pointing down, is minus mg times the cosine of whatever that angle is. I don't know that angle. Okay, so those are the components for gravity. Force number two is my frictional force. It is pointing positive in my positive horizontal prime direction, so that's the static friction force. If I'm at my maximum angle, this is equal to the coefficient of friction times the normal force. And that is my zero situation. And then I have the normal force. So if I have my normal force horizontally, that does not have anything. 
and it is positive in the vertical prime direction. So here's my breaking up of those two forces. All right, so the sum of the forces in the horizontal prime direction are going to equal zero if I'm at equilibrium. And the sum of the forces in the vertical prime direction are also going to be equal to zero if I'm at equilibrium. Now I'm interested in this angle. All right, so I can go after either one of these to get my angle. Let's look at the horizontal component. So if I add, I have mu sub s times the normal force minus mg times the sine of the angle. Well, that's going to equal zero. Then I'm going after this angle. All right, well, in order for me to get that angle, I need g. Check. I don't know the mass. I don't know the normal force, but I do know the coefficient. So I know I'm going to need that normal force. Well, that normal force is related to the vertical dimension. So let's go look at the vertical dimension. The normal force minus mg times the cosine of the angle is equal to zero. This tells me that my normal force is equal to mg times the cosine of the angle. All right. Now again, we're going after that angle theta. So mu times n, bring my theta to this side, equals mg times the sine of theta. I'm going to take my normal force and I'm going to plug it in for n. It's the same normal force. So I end up with mu sub s times n mg cosine of theta is equal to mg times the sine of theta. I'm solving for theta. Don't forget, you're solving for theta. Well, I have mg, divide both sides by mg, that goes away. And I end up with mu sub s equals the sine of theta over the cosine of theta. I still want to solve for theta. What's the sine of theta over cosine of theta? That's the tangent of the angle. So in order to get the angle, all I have to do is take the inverse tangent of my coefficient. So if my coefficient is 0.3, the inverse tangent of 0.3, my angle will equal 16.7 degrees for, I think that was the plastic case. Now as I increase my coefficient, so the um, cork, so this was plastic, I was told that the cork had a coefficient around 0.7. Would I expect to get a steeper angle or a shallower angle? Does the cork last longer as I lift it up and up and up with a higher coefficient or will it start to slide sooner? Well, it should probably last a little longer. So if my inverse tangent is of 0.7, my angle turns into 35 degrees. So the more frictional force, the, more, the higher the coefficient, the steeper the angle I can make before that block starts to slide. All right, so this is just a process of looking at equilibrium on an incline and recognizing how the normal force is related to that frictional force. Okay, so look at your last coefficient of friction, which should have been for the felt, and give a try and see what angle its maximum would be. All right, good job.